only genuine sacrifices make our lives meaningful and without that profound meaning life becomes an intolerable burden 30th august 2020 22nd sunday of the ordinary times today's gospel passage is the continuation of the last week's passage after knowing what the disciples think of him and after ascertaining that at least peter has the right understanding about him jesus now reveals to them that he has to take the path of passion and death on the cross now surprisingly peter objects to jesus proposal of death on the cross this peter has the knowledge about jesus that he is the son of god the messiah but he is not able to accept and digest jesus way of cross and agony to give salvation to the world this shows that only an intellectual understanding of jesus is not enough to comprehend or accept or digest the ways of god or the plans of jesus in the last week's homily we reflected that peter who had the correct knowledge about jesus happened to deny him three times but the same peter at a later stage gave up his life as a martyr and we pointed out that mere intellectual understanding or knowing about jesus was not enough for peter to be an effective disciple but he needed a deep spiritual experience of jesus which he got after jesus resurrection and therefore with the intellectual clarity and spiritual experience he could be an effective disciple of jesus even to the extent of dying a martyr's death therefore with the mere intellectual understanding about jesus peter is not able to comprehend the ways of god the path of cross proposed by jesus jesus is now angry that peter is not able to understand god's ways so he rebukes him for ignoring god's plans and putting his own ideas first claiming that jesus should not undergo the path of suffering on the cross jesus though he is angry with peter he is also a bit kind towards him yes because he is satan because peter is satan he is not ready to throw him out jesus is not ready to get rid of him but jesus is asking peter to go behind him and follow his path of the cross but when jesus was tempted in the desert at the end of his fasting and praying he rebuked satan there also saying away from me satan for it is written worship the lord your god and serve him only matthew chapter 4 verse 10 but in today's passage jesus considers peter a satan but still he says get behind me satan he is not telling peter go away from me get away from me no this is one more occasion to show that jesus manifests a great amount of emotional intelligence though he is angry with peter he is not telling him to go away from him the emotional intelligence today is one of the few essential things that we lack in our lives we have perhaps accumulated so much of cognitive intelligence with university degrees and loads of information but we have very miserably failed in acquiring the emotional intelligence and jesus is becoming one beautiful example today sometimes in our life also we may behave like peter by not accepting god's plans and words rather we try to put our own ideas and plans first often we are not having enough courage faith and wisdom to accept god's plans in our lives then jesus will be also angry with us as he was with peter 
Of course, his compassion will overcome his anger and he will tell us not to get away from him but to get behind him so that we may be able to follow him. Very often, God's ways and plans are not understandable to us. It does not make much sense to us. We raise the questions, why? Why me? Why now? And why only to me? And so on. Often we think, God is testing back me all these sufferings and challenges. In fact, God does not give us the sufferings. Very often it is our own creation or others create for us. Further, how can we say that only we have lots of sufferings and we are tested more than others? This is not very logical because what do we know about the sufferings in the lives of the others? We don't know exactly what all pains and challenges they undergo in their own lives. When we don't know about their sufferings, how can we compare it with that of ours? Sometimes when we suffer very much, when we think that we have lost all the strength to face the challenges, pains and agony in our lives, even we will say, it would have been better for me had I not been born in this world. Again, this is also illogical complaint. If I were not born at all, then how can I say that it would have been better for me not to have been born? Because I am not there at all in the first place, right? Jesus says, For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his life? Or what shall a man give in return for his life? These words of Jesus are very popular. In fact, these words attracted St. Francis Xavier so powerfully that he decided as a young professor to surrender to follow Jesus. It is said that in 1529, when St. Ignatius of Loyola met Francis, a bright and talented student and then professor in the college in Paris, with great dreams of worldly achievements and so on, Ignatius told him these words of Jesus, For what will profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his life? He was going on reflecting upon these words and finally Xavier decided to become a priest and join with St. Ignatius to be a missionary. These words of Jesus have deeper implications today. One has to see one's life to be meaningful and purposeful. The most important thing in life is that it should have meaning and purpose. One may possess the whole world, but still that is not a guarantee that one finds meaning in life. Yes, one may possess lots of things like a big house, a luxury car, a big bank balance. One may have acquired many degrees, good job and a fat salary. But in spite of all this, one may not still have any meaning and purpose in life. Of course, money and wealth are important in life, but that is not everything. When wealth is lost, nothing is lost, because we can earn, borrow or beg and get the money back. When health is lost, something is lost, because one cannot regain the total perfect health. But when meaning in life is lost, everything is lost. Our life becomes meaningful and purposeful only when we go out of ourselves to reach out others in genuine sacrifices. Once there was a high school in a small town in Uttar Pradesh. The classrooms of the kindergarten section had a thatched roof. On one hot afternoon, somehow the roof caught fire and due to the winds it spread fast. The teachers acted swiftly and managed to bring all the little children out to safety. The flames were getting more furious. As they counted the number of children, to their horror, they realized that one girl was missing. And they heard the cries of that little child from inside the burning classroom. They were all stunned. They did not know what to do. They were not ready to dare the hot flames. But there was a boy studying in the 10th standard. Without any hesitation, he, gathering all his courage, ventured into the classroom amidst the raging flames 
and brought the girl out safely. But unfortunately, he was burnt severely. He was rushed to the hospital. And alas, after a few days, he died. The whole town mourned for him and spoke very highly of his heroic deed. Later on, the district collector organized a public meeting in his honor. In the meeting, he called out his mother to the stage to give away a big cash reward to her in appreciation of her son's wonderful sacrifice. But her mother took the mic and said, My son is not dead, he is alive. Everyone was stunned. Then she continued, Yes, before my son died, he donated his eyes, and today four people got his eyes. Since my son is still seeing the world, and my son is still living in and through the little girl that he saved, then how can I say he is dead? So kindly excuse me, I don't want the cash award. Please give it away to any charitable institution. And she came down from the stage with cheery eyes and satisfied heart. Yes, that boy was living in and through his sacrifice that he made for the little girl. When His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama was once asked, what is the most confusing thing about human beings that it is very difficult for you to understand them? Then he quickly replied, I cannot understand people because they sacrifice their health in order to make money. Then they spend all their money in order to regain their health. Then they are so anxious about the future that they don't enjoy the present. As a result, they neither live in the present nor in the future. They live as if they are never going to die, and finally one day they die as if they have never started living. These words of Dalai Lama are very true. Our life becomes purposeful and meaningful only when we reach out to others in need. Today, self-centered life will soon end in vacuum and emptiness. Pope Francis meaningfully said, A river does not drink its water, a flower does not enjoy its own smell, a tree does not eat its fruits. So nature teaches us a great lesson. The purpose of everything is to live for others. Similarly, we can realize that human beings are also created in such a way that they find meaning and purpose of their lives is achieved only when they go beyond themselves. We need to go beyond ourselves to find fulfillment in our lives. For instance, our eyes need something outside them to function as eyes. The eyes cannot see themselves. Light rays have to come from outside to make images on the retina. If no light rays from outside, they cannot function as eyes. Similarly, Ears cannot hear themselves. There has to be a sound wave from outside entering the ears to function as ears. Otherwise, ears and pieces of leather both are same. As Viktor Frankl says, if one finds why to live, then one can manage any how. One may be in a total bondage externally, but still, one can be certainly free to find meaning in one's life. If that meaning is available, she can find any how to live. This meaning is available only to the extent we are ready to make genuine sacrifices for the others. Therefore, let us try to find meaning and purpose in life, and that can be achieved only in reaching out to others in genuine sacrifices. Let us think about it today.